Hi and welcome to this video all about Power Apps Model Driven Apps examples. In this video I'm going to show you a handful of different examples of model driven Power Apps to try and give you a bit of a, an example of how these apps can potentially be used. However everything you're going to see it's all just kind of as I say it truly is just an example so it can really be tweaked and changed to fit your specific uh, scenarios and needs. It's more about showing you the functionality that's available inside of model driven apps so you can kind of get that feel whether a model driven app would be right for you or potentially if you're comparing it against canvas apps and if you're thinking about canvas apps it's worth taking a look at our other video which is the canvas apps examples so the first app that i'm going to be talking about is actually um, a, a app that comes from uh, microsoft so actually all of these are applications which start off their life as a template you can get from uh, microsoft through the power apps um, admin and creation area this particular model driven app uh, is used as a self-service uh, business application um, with the ability to book resources such as tools or vehicles, hardware or other types of equipment that your business needs to operate their day-to-day -day job. Um, it will then calculate the inventory and provide a bunch more kind of useful functionality. So you can see here we can create a, a sort of little sort of list of all of our kind of products, whether laptops, keyboards, things like that, general kind of um, computer hardware pieces. We can create new um, products by clicking on the new button and that gives us a form here where we can specify maybe the colors, the name, category, some general details. But again, all of this can be easily updated. Um, back inside this list, you can also see we can kind of filter. So if I had a certain category, I might want to sort of sort these or filter them by, say, for example, category ID uh, is equal to C3. And then I can filter that down and find all the kind of items I've got category C3. Um, I can also uh, make reservations. So within here, you can see all the previous kind of reservations. So the start and end times, how long they're reserved for. And I can click on new um, and I can make a new reservation using this form in here. Again, these fields could easily be updated and we can change this. We also have a reviews area. So within here, we can actually make reviews against the products that we actually have. Um, and again, you can see in here, I can filter them down. I can see uh, the associated product that it relates to from our products list. And I can create new reviews by clicking on this new button across the top to add my new review item. So this is quite a simplistic app. But it gives you an example of what is possible um, with, a, with a model driven app and this is a really simplistic option and it's mostly driven by, as I say, those handful of tables, um, a couple of views and the ability to create some new forms. If you're in the process of considering Canvas apps versus model-driven apps, um, model-driven apps is really simple. So although we can't necessarily change the overall look and feel and layout like we can do with Canvas apps, Model driven apps is all about processing that data and data entry, so it's much quicker and easier to enter. The next model driven app we're going to take a look at is the Innovation Challenge. So, this model driven app uh, allows your business to inspire colleagues to come up with creative ideas for um, new kind of innovation. Uh, once ideas have been submitted, they can then be reviewed by colleagues and even voted on to be able to identify key popular ideas. The best ideas that surface at the top of the pile uh, will then get recognition, say, by the senior leadership team or the directors and rewarded with funding uh, to proceed with the actual uh, idea. Now, this all kind of gets rolled up into this dashboard that we can see at the front face of our model driven app. And we can see here active challenges and challenges essentially is just what is the challenge that you are trying to overcome with inside of your organization and you're sort of wanting people to submit ideas against it. You can, so you can see active challenges here um, and so actually see them rated by number of ideas. Uh, we can see an overall timeline of people posting and sort of putting in things in here. Um, active ideas down here, so actual ideas that we've got for resolving these. Uh, active challenges, so there's just different ways of viewing the same kind of data, but it's just showing you here, we've got things like bar charts, pie charts, lists um, of that kind of the, the tables. So it's different ways of viewing uh, the information. The actual information is broken down into these two kind of key areas. So we've got challenges. So if I click on challenges, you can see this is where we actually come in to enter a new challenge. So whether it be related to something we're working on, so like a 3D printing project, um, or whether it's a renewable energy type of thing, we're trying to um, incentivize our employees to think about some ideas of, for that sort of thing. And we can create new challenges by clicking the new button across the top. Again, it's gonna take us to our new challenge 
uh, option and this is a little bit more of a detailed form because not only do we have um, things like the, the, the details but we've also got any stakeholders which is a lookup um, so we can actually look up people from this list um, eventually once we save this you'll see any contributed ideas in fact I'll just come out of here and just go and select um, uh, sorry, if I just go into the ideas area in here, I will select one of these ideas. So um, let's say, for example, look at solar panels. You can actually then see um, this is the idea that's then uh, been sort of submitted against that challenge. Uh, and this will then roll up into that challenge area. Um, but you can see this is a lot more detailed um, form for the actual idea. And... Um, you can see that across the top we have what we call a business process flow which are basically stages so every record so like this is this idea is a record within the ideas table uh, each record can have its own kind of stage so we've got it's being created it's being developed it's being scored uh, it's got to sort of initiate the project executing closing the project so you can see those ideas can follow that kind of business process flow all the way through its kind of life cycle and again in here uh, you can see the overall kind of idea score the risk score um, team members that are kind of working on it uh, and so forth and again if I go back into the ideas area again I can kind of filter down uh, this by either using kind of the drop downs or a pretty cool thing is if you click on the show chart you can also see a visual chart as well that we can filter these ideas by um, so say for example clicking on tiny homes that'll then um, filter that down so I can see the sort of top five ideas by their kind of overall number of votes uh, in this way but again it's just food for thought how you can potentially have charts that can be used to filter down your tables and then finally we've got um, our fundraiser model driven app uh, and this model driven app allows colleagues the ability to donate time or even money towards causes the company is passionate about contributing towards uh, this app will enable your business to start fundraising campaigns for your favorite causes and then set goals uh, of what you wish to achieve towards that campaign once goals have been established you will then track the overall performance that's been submitted towards those goals Again, um, unfortunately, there's not much data in here, but you can see we've got a nice dashboard view here. So you can see all the donations, paid donations, total donations, all of that tracked inside of one uh, single dashboard. We can see within here all our kind of fundraisers. So what is it we're raising money towards? So, for example, storm relief. You can click into then the overall kind of total donations, maybe a video link or something like that, which is if you've got some sort of nice sort of rich kind of media materials and things like that. Um, but again, we can kind of see the overall kind of details of the relief, um, the sort of donations that have been submitted towards this particular re relief, um, the, the timeline towards this uh, overall kind of campaign, and anything else that potentially could be related to it, so activities or connections, uh, documents, anything like that. Um, or if we're just interested in diving into donations, we can see it as a full table within here, uh, and we can kind of filter these down based on donation amounts or who they're from, or overall categories that they relate to. Um, uh, again, we've got all the kind of same options um, of being able to sort of filter down these tables. So again, that gives you a bit of an idea about uh, what potentially um, you, you can do with um, model-driven apps. I hope you found those um, examples useful and thought-inspiring. Um, if you do have any questions about model driven apps, you can always reach out to us uh, with any of the questions you've got or use a comment thread below. Um, but as I say, these are just purely just examples um, and all the kind of functionality that you've seen could be reproduced uh, and used in slightly different ways. But it's a good thing to kind of see what kind of functionality is built into these apps before you jump in.